Hello. Hey, everybody. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Chris. How have you been? Doing well. How are you? Hanging in there by a thread, but I'm hanging in there. That's the general consensus from friends and loved ones lately. <laughs> hanging in there for dear life. Yeah, we're all barely surviving, I guess. 100%. Hello, <laughs> Demi. How are you? Arrived. Yes. All right, that needs to be highlighted because yeah. people need to know. We must we must bow to the queen. Oh. I can't really bow right now. Bow, I'm... bow before the queen. <laughs> I feel like, you know, I, I don't know you, Demi. <laughs> uh, we're, I'm, you know, we're hanging in there. We, we you know, we're, we're hanging in there. Thank you for asking, Demi. Demi asked how we're doing, and also called us beautiful. And flattery will get you everywhere. So keep it up. So I mean, so tell us about you, Demi. What's what's going on <laughs> in Demi's world? Demi's world. That sounds like a show in and of itself. Yeah. Hello, Moore's Hans. Demi says, I'm great. Had a great stream. A lot of sexual talk on my stream tonight, actually. Well. Is this a, is this a topic? What were some things that came up? Hello, Trip Fantasy. Hey, Trip Fan. So, I mean, yeah, if you've got a, if you've got a stream, you know, promote it. But here's, the, here's a great uh, little cross promo action. Get it going. Let us know uh, where to tune in when. Yeah, if you put your info on here, actually, uh, on the More Than Friends channel, uh, I think Demi should be one of the, I, I can't remember what it's called, like highlighted or promoted channels. I don't know how to, but if you go on the More Than Friends channel, you should be able to see Demi on top as like one of the channels that's recommended. Okay. Also, Trip Fantasy is uh, putting their twitch on there as well check them out haven't seen them couldn't give me my personal endorsement but they're a friend of the show so you fucking better check them out <laughs> and then uh before we go any further uh for any audio listeners uh so uh we are recording this live on twitch with video and there is audience interaction with the chat and everything so whenever we call out somebody in the chat that is what we're doing uh, if you want to tune into the show live, you can follow us at twitch.tv slash more than friends. And if you don't want to, that's fine. You can still listen to the show on Apple podcast and Spotify. And the video version is later uploaded to YouTube as well. And I do, I mean, I guess it's, I don't know, a little silly of me to apologize, but I do want to apologize to our listening only listeners, uh, because you know we, we're still going to be adapting and tweaking this style of this new format. We want to make sure we, we, we do give you guys the full full experience. Uh, I mean you're definitely oh goodness you know don't miss out uh, definitely tune into this the twitch uh, but we want to make this just as fun and engaging as it always has been for all of our podcast listeners. So pardon me I've got some lighting issues. Oh no. All right, that'll have to do. So more Moore's Hans says, I expect more sexual talk. And, well, you're absolutely right. <laughs> you could expect more sexual talk on this show. But maybe this is just going to be a show about relationships and love, you know, not just about maybe. sex. Maybe. We don't know. We, we don't know. Sometimes we come prepared with topics. Sometimes we don't. So, Morris Hans, do you have a question you'd like to ask or perhaps a topic you'd like us to, to dive into and discuss with your high expectations? I like your avatar, by the way. <laughs> very nice. Very sexy, actually. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, I have a, a weird question, I guess. Um so oftentimes, <laughs> this is just like in general, I suppose. Uh, but people ask, like, are you are you a boob man or a or an ass man? And like, I like chests on men, 
would I be a boob man then? But I don't like uh, man boobs. Heck, I mean, you like you like muscles or you like nipples? I mean, like what what about a chest? A man a man's chest? Do you enjoy? <laughs> Just the general aesthetic, like. It doesn't have to be necessarily chiseled, but like just you know a, a chesty chest. <laughs> That's not a description. <laughs> like a like a nice. It's almost like a like a frame of a body. <laughs> I don't. Your work. I like, I can't put these to words because like there's no clear cut okay, answer. They don't have to be muscular. Yeah. But the it just has to be a man's have chest. To be more defined, like. What about man boobs? What about moobs? See, I'm not a fan of the man boob though, so okay, I'm not. So I'm then, definitely not a boob man. Okay, so because that's not boobs. So it's. It, I would have to say the strictly gay equivalent of boobs would be pectorals. Would be pecs. So, so I'm a peck man. Yeah, if if you like a pecs. pecker. <laughs> yeah, sure. I I am a pecker. Okay. <laughs> no. I, <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, so we've got some questions and topics in the chat. Um, first of all, before we continue, Demi says, Ass Man, uh, very yeah, passionately, in it, all caps. Ass man. Um, um, so there's so, that. Also, welcome, Emily, an old friend of the show. Our first guest, actually. An old friend of the show. <laughs> I mean, I she's not like old. Think, Emily, I think, deserves much more than that. I think Emily deserves... Just our premier another yeah another bow perhaps <laughs> another bow yeah that's right okay yeah. another queen mm -hmm. has entered the building sorry Demi it's all good <laughs> Demi I think Demi's confident enough in themselves to share the spotlight I don't think <laughs> well, I don't know about that <laughs> uh, uh, new porn yay or nay from Trip Fan um, I'm a fan of porn in, in all of its glory porn uh, in every form. Well, I mean, as long as it's all consenting, yeah. Well, yeah, legal and but, consensual, yeah, yeah, but yeah, you know, um, yeah, I'd say animated porn's fine. Um, I I love animated porn. I do. I mean, I enjoy like yeah, the, the I I enjoy animated porn strictly for the the ultra fantasy and sci fi aspects. Like, yes. I can see a dick going into a vagina IRL. You know, but uh, tentacle porn, you know, that's like, you don't see tentacles in real life. So that's neat. <laughs> yeah. And live action tentacle porn is awful. I'm sure. I don't think I've, <laughs> like, I, okay, that, that actually leads me to a topic. Um, okay. All right. We're going everywhere where we are. We have topic ADD today. First off, to backtrack <laughs> just a touch, uh, I think boobs are fun in any shape and size. Uh, so therefore, I'm an ass man. Um, because boobs are fun no matter what. Um, Wait, so you're an ass man because boobs are fun no matter what? Correct. Correct. Like, boob boob men, boob guys, boob, boob people, boob friends, <laughs> fans of boob. Uh, Boobettes. Generally, like one, they're, they're very specific about their boob love. They're either like a very chesty boob, or, you know, very large, robust boob, or perhaps a flat chest. Um, where I think any size of boob is just a great time. Um, but, um, but yeah, the ass is, is, uh, a nice, nice posteriors. It's nice. I don't know. It's good. I mean, I appreciate all of the body. Absolutely. And I, I think that, that, that all of the body can be fun, mm -hmm. uh, at times. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know when it, when it comes to things that like, and get me excited. I don't. I can't look at an isolated butt and get excited. Um, I can't look but, at an isolated pair of titties and get excited either. Well, I can look at an isolated chest, and like I can be like, okay, all right, you know, like I don't like, think I, I've I, seen. I'm always, okay, I'm always trying to sneak a peek at boobies and sneak a peek at butts and sneak a peek at crotches, you know. But just a like a, a, a static image of boob. <laughs> Crotch. It's not gonna <laughs> boob. Yeah. It's not it's not I'm not gonna I'm just like I guess I'm just too inundated with, with media to be like, oh there it is. Like that's I mean, maybe when I was, you know, eleven, I'd be like, Yeah, boob. <laughs> fucking let's go. I mean I could look at a a cup on a shelf and I would <laughs> I know you'd fucking just go nuts. Yeah, you'd start 
<laughs> in your shorts. Okay. Freshly pubescent Steven jerked it to everything. Yeah. Fast forwarding back, skipping <laughs> back over topics to from tentacles to real life tentacle porn. There's a uh, an uptick in uh, strange dildos. Uh, I've seen. <laughs> This sounds like a news broadcast. There is an uptick in strange dildos. In odd dildo usage. Um, and while I am happy that people are unmarrying the idea of strictly shoving penis-shaped things in their holes, there's, like, these dragon penis dildos. Have you seen these? Yeah, actually. Uh, I am... Uh... Vaguely um, interested in them, actually. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's as close to tentacle, you know, real life tentacle porn, I think, as you're going to get. Like, to me, I haven't, I, I've, I've watched a few solo masturbation scenes with the dragon dildo, and I'm like, that's, uh, that's not doing it for me. Like, I don't know. Like, this, you know, it's like the size of a fucking baby's arm, and that's, that's hot, you know, because it's a big fucker. But, um, <laughs> Morris Hands says, penis-shaped things in any hole. Sounds like a great time. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Uh, but the, the dragon dildo is more like an S-hook. Like, it's, it's fucking... It's got some curvature to it. S-hook. I, mean, I don't know why, but I heard ass again. S-hook, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want an ass-hook. Yeah. Well, I guess an S-hook would be an ass-hook. Maybe. For a dildo. In any case, I think it's strange. And Moody Taurus, uh, a.k.a. Emily, sorry to... I mean, you already put yourself in the chat out there, so it's fine. Uh, <laughs> they make... It says they make tentacle-shaped dildos. So, yeah, I, I would like to see these. Uh, if somebody's got a picture, you could throw it up. I don't know. That's allowed in the comments. But... Um, <laughs> I don't know if you can upload pictures. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Phone. I don't know the capabilities. I think we can share screens, but I don't... I don't, I don't know if I want to mess with that. Um, not, not for the first time, I don't want to fuck it up. Yeah. But um, <laughs> if you've got uh, product knowledge, intimate product knowledge of dragon and or tentacle and or non penile shaped dildo, please let us know and share your seen, experiences. Have you seen any of the abnormal fleshlights out there? No. There's actually there's some very interesting ones. Okay. Uh, so there's there's like. Uh, you've seen the dragon dick dildos. Yep. But there are dragon mouth fleshlights. Like, like, it's like a fantasy, like a, like it's got a beak. It, well, like depending, there's different kinds of dragons. Um, there's like oh, the, yeah. there's like wyverns and there's other kinds of dragons. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> what other kind of dragons are there, Steven? You know, there's the, the, the bird dragons, the, reptilian dragon i don't know mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of different styles of dragons and you can find all kinds of weird fleshlights and things and there's like it, it's the tongue that gets me if there's there's like some really interesting dragon tongues and then you can get them so that they're like warmed and you can put like warm water in them they, they get pretty in depth it's the same with the with the dildos too you can get um kinds that squirt yeah and then uh squirting dildos are i'm definitely a fan of like and have you seen the uh uh there's like alien dildos that lay eggs inside of you? I think I've had this conversation with somebody um and I don't I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't you don't want eggs inside of you? I, in, inside of anybody. That's not uh like the the hottest that is for me. <laughs> you don't want eggs the, inside of anybody. Yes, kegel balls <laughs> is the kegel balls. The fucking you know the balls that one shoves in their various orifices to help do exercises and or just, I don't know, some sort of sexual pleasure. You've seen, you've seen these, right? The Benoit balls or the, the Kegel balls. I've seen the sex eggs, but I don't think I've seen exercise vagina balls. <laughs> Are, they, just, Are they the same thing? You just shove them up there and then you just hold them up there. And that's uh, going to tighten your walls, perhaps. I don't know. I don't know what it does for you because I don't have a vagina. 
I have not done my research. I, I, I wish I had show, a vagina. Is that we are a sexy talk show that doesn't do their research. So yeah, yeah. that's our premise. We're professional, okay, non professionals. That's our whole fucking modus operandi. So <laughs> yeah, they're a thing. Um, and they're out there. I wouldn't want it's a goop thing. I wouldn't want eggs laid like like do the do the eggs burst? Are they, is it like a tapioca pudding balls? Like boba? Like, like, like boba are they the balls? bursting pearls, or are yeah, they? The... Yeah. What, what, are, what are these? The go, tell me more. Uh, so uh, I I don't think I've seen any that burst. I feel like that would be a problem. Uh, but <laughs> where do you go to replenish that? You go back to the sector. Hey, I need more <laughs> bursting boba pussy balls. My... <laughs> <laughs> my alien eggs burst inside of me. I need to. Yeah, I need more. Uh, <laughs> it's like the walk of shame, uh, <laughs> with just like goop going down your leg. Hey man, <laughs> you got any more of those alien egg balls? I need them. <laughs> uh, here comes Steven again. Uh, <laughs> this guy just needs to stop. Can you imagine getting one of those lost inside of you? That's why I hope they burst. Like that's <laughs> genuinely, why I hope they. Are biodegradable. Maybe we should invent like bursting degradable ass or vagina eggs. Or mouth eggs. Whatever wherever you want to <laughs> mouth eggs. Oh no. Oh, wait, wait. Is it wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> I think that's just okay. Rogue biologist writes in my alien eggs burst inside of me. I picked the wrong moment to join the stream. So I just just <laughs> to clarify, Rogue, you are say you're just reiterating what you heard when you chimed in to the, the <laughs> podcast at this moment, the stream, right? You didn't actually, if you did have alien eggs burst inside of you, we need your, you we need you on the show right now. <laughs> we, I need, yeah, you need to hop online, and we will give you the code to, to join us in video. So we need, we need, we need to know. Come on, Rogue B, don't leave us fucking hanging here. I need you to type for dust up. <laughs> don't be <laughs> away from the keyboard right now. <laughs> that's actually yeah. that's a sensation that I've never experienced. Is like something loose inside of me. I guess other than shit. Loot? You've had loose poop inside of you? <laughs> no, I mean like you like something something. <laughs> So, I mean, like, like something you know, detached from me, I guess. Like, not a product of me inside of my ass. I've never felt that before. Like, I've never been pregnant. Oh, I've yeah, never sure, been right. like. I've never had so, alien yeah, eggs I've, in me. I've shoved tethered things into partners, but never. No, I'd I retract that. It, uh, <laughs> I was going to say I've never like you know, there's no, I've, I've never let go of the tether. Um, but I have shoved things, uh, the Benoit balls, the, the, the Kegel balls. I have, I've, uh, played with those with partners. And, um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know, but somebody out there does. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people do. Probably. Yeah. I'm hoping somebody on our fucking comment section. So rogue biologist says, I live in Australia. We have some weird animals here. But I can say alien eggs inside of you is not something that happens. Oh, uh, so just FYI, Rogue B, in case you're unawares, the U.S. very much thinks that, that, that Australia has those. Yeah. Like, like all we understand of Australia is that it will everything that lives there, aside from the humans, is trying to murder us. So, you know, even koalas are terrifying. Um, by the by. <laughs> I like koalas. No. I don't think they're terrifying. Oh, you need to go Google koalas right now. Go go, go Google I, them. Go Google images of koalas. They are they have been uh, typecast as this cute, lovable teddy bear, but like their fangs are vicious. They are fucking killers, man. Like they're unfortunately functionally extinct, but they are uh, <laughs> they are fucking brutal. Like, okay, sharp fangs. Will fuck you up. Um, so anywho's uh, the dragon dildos like more power to the people who love them and use them. Uh, they all have <laughs> all. Boris Hans says they all have hepatitis. That's 
<laughs> the koalas or all Australians? No, I, no that's don't start fucking riots here. <laughs> Obviously, they meant the koalas. All right. Although, okay, to okay. be fair, you should probably make sure you use complete sentences when you're. <laughs> Koalas have a big <laughs> problem with chlamydia. Really, koalas need to come on the show. I think koala koala media. I tried. I tried. Okay. Right. <laughs> They're not clams. That's what it is. Clams. Chlamydia. Chlamydia and hepatitis. <laughs> Um, I still think chlamydia would be a beautiful name for a woman, uh, <laughs> detached from the meaning. I think like the way that it sounds is very nice. It's like Clementine and Lydia squished together. Chlamydia. <laughs> so Clementine is sweet, and Lydia is beautiful. I, I love the name Lydia, but um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's the the hard ch at the beginning of that like clementine is like a rare instance where that's okay but chlamydia like it, just, it sounds like I'm <laughs> well we're not going Clah. we're it's just chlamydia chlamydia no you can't chlamydia. search it up you can't fucking shine that turd up it's it's still chlamydia <laughs> i i think it's a beautiful it's a beautiful name i think that we need to come up with a worse name or actually, no. Let's not come up with the worst name. I just think we need to detach from the the stigma around chlamydia. Rogue B writes in, uh, for the people who use those dragon dildos, I have no idea where their insides go and allow them to fit safely. Absolutely no. Any, like, more, pro more power to anybody who shoves things in their body because where does it all go? Like, it's it's a mystery to me. Like, I see all kinds of pornography of just massive dongs and dildos and like traffic cones and beer bottles and all kinds of bizarre shit just getting shoved up into Orify and I don't know where it goes. Like I've I saw a, a young lady cough up a double sided dildo. It was she like there was nothing. What? Yeah. There was nothing. It was just her on screen and then she goes whoop and a long like who comes out of her. It's just like you know, bravo, you know, good on you. But where'd that Jesus. come? From? Where'd that come from? Her throat and diaphragm, obviously. But how do you have? That's a. I'm sorry, I, I'm speechless. Up. Their arseholes are portals to Narnia. That is correct. They're all the wardrobe. Every orifice is a wardrobe that uh, that Aslan the lion is waiting to pop out of. <laughs> Uh, what is it? Don't we have like a mile of intestines? Probably. Like we have like a mile of intestines, and we we can shove dildos up there and still have room. There's mm -hmm. got to be portals to Narnia. There's got to be some kind of interdimensional Fisting quantum physics. Um, Trip fan writes in. Girlfriend insists on calling me Grand Wizard in bed because she likes <laughs> Harry Potter, but she doesn't realize the duality of the term. What do I do? Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. All right. Let's back up this train. So, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack here. There's actually. a lot to unpack here. First off, uh, <laughs> I assume you mean the duality of the term being Grand Wizard in the negative connotation of the Ku Klux Klan Grand Wizard, just to confirm that. Um, I mean, maybe she's secretly racist and this is pulling is, is using the guise of, oh, I'm just really into Harry Potter. I'm going to call the wizard. Like, I got a lot of personal, real personal questions. This is going to get real deep, real fast, Trip Fan. So if you're ready for this, uh, you can remove your consent at any time. But are they like, is it role play beforehand? Like, oh, Grand Wizard, I need you to teach me. We're ready, so you're both present, even oh. better. Okay. Um, um, or is it like the royal we? Anyway, uh, is it like a oh, Grand Wizard? I've been I'm a naughty magic user. You need to discipline me. Or is it like in the moment, like yeah, give it to me, Grand Wizard? Oh, and is are is she saying the whole thing the entire time? Like, <laughs> what? I need more. I need more information. This is deep. <laughs> I'm still kind of intrigued by that. I think she might be a closet racist. <laughs> I'm sorry to fuck your whole life up there. Um, yes, as if she's been using the dark arts for years. Uh, 
Oh, oh, always, it's the full wizard. Grand Wizard. Yeah, like, oh, Grand Wizard, oh, oh, give it to me, Grand Wizard. There's no other, she doesn't put any other phrases or anything in there, like... Throw out the G-dub, or the fucking Dumbledore. Dumbledore, that's another really fun one to say. Dumbledore. Dumbledore. Yeah. Also, fuck you, J.K. Rowling. Sometimes she adds in Pep Pep. I don't know Pep Pep. Is that Grand, like... Grand Wizard Pep Pep. Let's see, Ooh. okay. Moody Torres chimes in with a perfect. Maybe suggest headmaster or professor instead. Headmaster is great because there's duality to to that too. Yeah, headmaster's brilliant. That's I love that. Brilliant. Leave uh, it to the yeah. fucking writer, the and sexy writer. Like I, yeah, like I like professor. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Danny, Emily writes yeah, for those that don't know, um, but yeah, that's that's uh, brilliant. Headmaster, I love that. Uh, Rogue B says, uh, or she could secretly want them to dress as a giant sperm. Uh, perhaps <laughs> I mean, you know, like that's a very obsequious way to get to your your goal. I think there's some communication issues there if you're trying to get your partner to dress up like a giant sperm. If you have a sperm fetish. And you want your partner to dress up like a giant sperm. But specifically and, giant sperm, like actual, like right. the sperm itself. Don't use a thinly veiled racism <laughs> uh, role play as your way to get that. I think. Yeah, don't don't use a, a clan robe as a sperm yeah. costume. There's yeah. uh there's alternatives. Trip fan says, I wish I could be the headmaster. So the, again, you're giving us a lot. A lot of double entendres here, but um, so are you saying that you wish that your head giving skills were more, or are you wishing that you didn't have the name Grand Wizard? How do you feel about being called Grand Wizard? Does it get you going? Are you like fuck yeah because your partner's into it, or are you just like are you put off by the Grand Wizard bit? Or do you also, think about the Ku Klux Klan? Also, apparently, if you need any help uh, learning. How to be a great headmaster? Uh, Demi is apparently pretty great at it. So Demi yeah. says, "I'm a great headmaster." Wink, wink. So you know, maybe maybe Demi can share some tips. <laughs> maybe they involve grapefruit. Oh God! <laughs> grapefruit. Have we discussed this on on the show? We have. We have. Okay, uh, so fans of the show will know what we're talking about. You know, no, Demi. What? Demi says use all the teeth. All right. Headmaster privileges revoked. No. Not necessarily. But that's a bold strike. Okay, good. All right. Demi all right. All right. Demi's, Demi's kidding. Demi, Demi the drag. Oh, oh that's right. We have, we have the blowjob queen in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Like, so, all right. Actually, now, here any titles away from anybody or lessen anybody's accomplishments here. Okay, we've we. It seems like we have a lot of experts in the chat, though. I think I think maybe it's it's advice time. If anyone in the chat wants to give advice on how to give the best head, that's a lot. To share type. your secrets. <laughs> okay, maybe send in a video of yourself with the best clip. <laughs> I don't know. That um, <laughs> I don't know. Not, that I'm not like that. I was complaining. I was saying I Chris, they would this... explain their, their tips. Not a demonstration. I need Although... you to send a video of you sucking a dick right now. That's <laughs> you have to. This is missions. for science. The video sending now. Um, so trip fam, we really gotta go back to this. Uh, you want to be the headmaster. Are you saying that you need more oral skills, or are you just wishing that they would call you a headmaster? Um, and to while you answer that, let me interject with a story. Um, story time. So I'm, you know, I, we met Stephen, you know, over video games essentially, and before the internet really existed, especially in the realm of video games and you know playing you know, playing online, you would go around believing that you were the best. Of a, at a certain video game, if you could beat all the kids in your neighborhood, you know, you'd be like, okay, I'm I'm obviously amazing at this game because nobody in a certain radius of me can beat me. And then with the advent of playing online, you discovered 
there were a lot of kids like that in each neighborhood that were really good in their own neighborhood, but got their fucking ass handed to them by people who were better. So that is absolutely why uh, we need like some sort of you know national blowjob competition. <laughs> Because there are regional there are regional experts, there are regional fucking pros that are this the best dick suckers out there, as far as they know, you know. But there needs to be a grading system, like a national ranking system. Like I'm a certified ranker, and you're a certified blowjob giver, and well, where's what's your rank? You know, certified ranker. Yeah, I, I'm just a certified wanker. Heyo. <laughs> um. So Trip Fan writes in and says uh, she doesn't give you, give me a chance to shine, uh, so you don't get a lot of the um, opportunities to go down south, as it were. Is that what you're saying, Trip Fan? Uh, Rogue B says honestly, all this talk reminds me of the story a few years ago of the guy who sucked a big dick so hard he damaged his windpipe. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um. There's, I, I've heard <laughs> uh, that there are throat dis, there's throat discomfort after a long night of dick sucking. Um, I only get jaw discomfort. Like I get like lock jaw. Yeah. Like that ha- that happens a lot, or like yeah. like sometimes I have a hard time like closing are, my are jaw you, afterwards, and then just like drawing it everywhere. the penises. I'm, I'm doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm doing my best. That's a, that's uh, a big no. I, I am definitely not uh, the headmaster. <laughs> uh, so Trip Fan uh, responded, uh, she doesn't trust me due to my cannibalistic tendencies. Trip uh, Fan is trolling. I I think we... Didn't we discuss teeth uh, in vagina nibbling previously what hold on what cannibalistic tendencies you have to elaborate you can't it, these are all a bunch of mysteries what no, yeah so like i what do you uh, mean like nibble I, 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 biting like actual actual cannibalistic ten- no like, steven like he's he's using um he's using hyperbole i mean maybe just aggressive teeth play and biting but I don't think that he's actually eating flesh. Maybe if he is, I don't know. But I hope there's consent in that. But um, you know, I have a long history. I don't. That's cryptic to me. That's some fucking zodiac killer shit. But <laughs> I see the, the, we need we need specifics. Yeah, we need a frame of reference. If you if you feel like sharing. <laughs> So Demi the drag queen is owning up to their their having to get uh Rogue, oh. Rogue B says that they had to go to the, the hospital for the deep throating action. But yeah, so as what I was saying earlier was yeah, um the, it was Demi the, all more, along. the more muscles you get involved, in, whether it's your jaw and or your throat, they all tire out, you know. Um if there are multiple throats, is it is it an esophagi? Or an esophagus. <laughs> Esophaguses. <laughs> Esophaguses? That sounds like a snowlophagus. Yeah. Esophagagal? <laughs> is what Crip Man says. I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I wonder what the uh, collective noun for esophagus is. is. <laughs> esophaguses is a, a, a choke of esophaguses a choke yeah you know, like a pride of lions or a, a murder of crows a collective <laughs> noun is the, the the name of a group of something so i wonder what the collective noun for esophagi is a, a breath of esophaguses i don't know a bread, bread, like a swallow like a of esophaguses. Yes, there's a okay. Writer. There we All right, are. there we are. That's a writer. Moody Taurus writes in a swallow of esophaguses. How often do you use your tongue? As often as you possibly fucking can. Well, hold on. Sorry, we. 
I got a little mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll Hold on now. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to sexy time, you use that tongue as much as possible. It is a strong muscle. Why? I I like I like I like subtle use of tongue tongue tongue. Um, like I mean, like kissing. I think I think there's such thing as too much tongue. Sure. When it comes to kissing, when going down though, no like further, tongue. you know, once you once you once you leave are, the mouth because the yeah. mouth is very, you know that's extremely intimate, you know, uh, and also you're giving up a lot of control when you let somebody's tongue in your mouth. But um, when you're yeah, like my tongue it dances, my friend. <laughs> And, and and when I'm receiving oral, I also like a lot of tongue, like not just tongue, like mouth, like it, when it, when we're encased, when we are, when we've when we've taken a, as much of the penis as we can, uh, then we also add some tongue in there, and that's whew, chef's kiss. Yeah, it's got to be correct. Yeah, there's yeah. the tongue. Like yeah. without without that, then it's just it's just that. 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 But you need. This, you take your ass home, okay? You can just you you take the bus home if you're doing that. <laughs> just gently, like if you're licking the dick. Cl- yes, that's right. Chef's kiss. So is tongue now the new chef's kiss? Uh, no, chef's kiss is the chef's kiss. Um, but like if you're licking the uh, like the dick clip, like that that little. Uh, Urethra. Urethra. Oh no! I yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Where the head? Sorry. Yeah. yeah, the the weird little, the the lip, the lip clip, clip lip lip cliff. <laughs> Just... Oh, biologist writes in. <laughs> Straining your tongue because you are dancing it across your partner's bits is too hard. Is proof you are doing it well. As long as the partner enjoys it, yes. As long as you know, as, as long as you're getting good feedback, yeah. Like if your tongue is tired at the end of, of the night, you've you've done all you can do, really. You know, I mean, you you left it all on the dance floor, and that's I think the most important part is you gotta you gotta make sure you're le- you're leaving it all out there, unless you're like, you know, hey, we're both in a committed relationship. We got time for a quickie. Let's bang one out. Um. You gotta squeeze one in there, but otherwise, fucking give it your best, give it your all. Anything to that? Nobody. Anybody? <laughs> now we have radio silence. <laughs> I think the first time that I ever like made out, made out with somebody that I was actually into, mm-hmm. um, it it was great in the moment, but afterwards it sucked because my tongue was sore for like three weeks because we didn't, we didn't know what we were doing. Sure. Like it was, it was our first time. And so there was a lot of, there was a lot of tongue and there was a lot of like tongue sucking and tongue, Mm -hmm. like just trying all kinds of different things. And like, we sucked each other's tongue so fucking hard. Mm -hmm. Like I thought it was going to come out. Like I thought it would be detached. There's a lot of tongue. It's not going to come out. Well, it was, it, it really freaking hurt. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, I remember, yeah, in my, my late teens, early 20s, when you're, you know, we've got a new relationship or, you know, you're or somebody's a virgin and you're trying to, you know, get things going and you're just making out a lot, you know, um, before the invention of the roadmap. Um, yeah, you're just, you know, <laughs> pressing the waters and making out hard and then like, oh, you're like, you're trying to get to the next base or whatever and you know they're you're not getting a pass yet but you're still making out keeping things hot and heavy yeah it, it gets exhausting but but you're into it and you're still here for it so cheers to cheers to young chris you you keep trying bud cheers chris mm. <laughs> oh my god don't don't <laughs> choke on the i'm sorry cruising. hold on i'm muting the mic yeah. temporarily while i die all right and look at him die. Look at him, folks. You can't see the, pe- the people who are at home don't get to see this. People who are just uh, listening to the, the audio, they get to hear me comment on. But God damn it. <laughs> that is why I'm not the headmaster. Can't even drink water without. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. 
Was there anything that young Chris um, thought would be exciting and attempted and then regretted? Um, car sex has always been a bad time. Really? Like I, it's I, it's yeah, it's sex. It's pizza. Pizza. You know, like there's never. I've never had a bad pizza. I'm gonna eat the pizza. <laughs> I, you know. Um, but it's just car sex is always out of necessity. It's because nobody has a place to go fuck. You know, but you're not. It's it's to me. It's not. It's just. I wish I had a house. I'm bad to go <laughs> have sex with somebody. I'd, it is um, kind of depressing, actually. I don't know about depressing. It's just, yeah. Like, I wish I had a bed. Yeah. I wish I had a bed. <laughs> uh, speaking of car sex, uh, so I worked downtown, and uh, on my way, uh, I, I took a trip out to my car, like on a lunch break or something, and um, on my way back to work, I, I definitely saw uh, a sex worker hop into a car and uh, the driver like totally pulled down his pants, uh, and she like I I unfortunately I couldn't like linger. You know I, I had to keep walking towards my destination. I couldn't. Be, like, unfortunately, I could not. Fall. Like let me watch. Let me find a reason to stand here and watch you. But like I saw <laughs> the very the very lightning fast interaction of woman hopping sex worker hopping car on the passenger side driver like. Got up like this and like like scooted scoot his pants down, and the the in, the sex worker in the passenger seat was just like waiting, you know. Like I like saw her start to go like this, you know, start to go like the fucking duck bob. Yeah, the little bird. But, like I was like, I was walking. I'm like, damn it! Like I wish I could have been a fly on the dashboard, you know. Um, because it'd be like it was just so it was so lightning quick, like. He pulled up, and she just hopped right the fuck in. Um, like it's like they were on the phone prior to that or something. I don't know. I have no idea how it worked out that way. Yeah, they they had to have had a roadmap. Yeah, clearly, like she knew maybe, the assignment. Like, maybe, yeah, maybe it's like a weekly meetup or a daily. I don't know how often he's getting you know, getting this fucking roadie. But she uh, understood what she had to do, and she did it. She understood the assignment. She was ready, and so was he. Like, well, short of driving up pantsless, he <laughs> fucking pulled up and just started. He pulled his drawers down immediately. I actually, uh, so I don't, I don't know if I like car sex, but I think I like car fooling around. Okay, like it's, there's something kind of nice about like it's kind of an adventure that you're on with somebody because you have to find a place to go. Mm-hmm. And there's always the risk of getting caught. Yeah. So that's that's sometimes mm-hmm. exciting. Um, and then I don't know, there's something kind of like beautiful about like the windows fogging up and then you're just in a confined space with somebody sharing an intimate moment. It's kind of fun, I think. But I'm also I'm I'm a I'm a small human. I'm the size yeah. of a of a hobbit. Uh so you know, I can I can fit in small places. Right. That's and that's, and that's the rub. Like I enjoy the exhibitionism aspect. Like I definitely like a bit of grab assery and and uh, fooling around in public, but not in a car. Like in a car, there's just not enough room for me to maneuver, and there's also obstacles. Like there's just a, there's that center console, and or like if you are bold enough to hop in the back seat, which is terrifying to me because I can't make a quick fucking getaway. Like, I like to be able to fucking, like, I'm the guy who likes to sit in a restaurant and be able to see the door so I can fucking bolt if I need to. I'm just fucking weird. Um, see, I'm a hop so, in the back seat kind of guy. Yeah, no, like. I'm like, here, let me just, like, jump across the center console and then close her off. Rogue Biologist writes in, uh, just be careful you're not distracting the driver if you are rubbing them down while you're moving. And so, yeah, I... I go back and forth on Roadhead. Um, like, I used to think it was, like, the pinnacle. Like, you've achieved complete freedom and awesomeness being able to drive a vehicle and receive a blowjob at the same time. It was like, ah, this is this is the, the, the best. But then I received them, and I'm like, eh. Like, I'm, I enjoy driving. I enjoy getting blowjobs. But combining the two... I can't focus on both at the same time, hundred percent. 
Yeah. Um, so neither is as quality I as it enjoy both as much. Um, and I'm not like a, a car guy, but I just enjoy driving a lot. Um, and um, so I, I took a stance of like, oh, I don't know, but I definitely still enjoy Roadhead. Um, but I just, you know, for a while I was like, ah, no, I don't want it. But I, you know what? I'm not going to lie. Anytime I can get head, just fucking give it to me. So Anytime. Anytime. 100%. Uh, I'm going back a little bit in the chat. There have been a few comments mm. on this topic. Um, Demi says, I hate car play, not comfortable, can't get into it. No shame. Yeah. I like you know a little bit of car finger blasting, a little bit of car tug job. But um, by and large, yeah, it's, it's not – you can't enjoy it fully. Rogue then, B says, uh, unless you are into that, cruising is still a uh, big – uh, considering the gay scene is more open these days. I don't know if I understand that. Um, cruising, um, being going around and picking people up. We need, we need more. You just uh, roll down your window and you're like, I'm gay. <laughs> and, then like men, and then just jump into the <laughs> other. <window. laughs> like I know that, that truck stops are very prominent. Uh, in the the gay community still, um, but I don't. I'm unfamiliar with cruising, so please give us yeah, some no, reference. I'm not that. sure I understand what cruising is. Yeah, uh, and then Demi says I like public play, car play. I will only jerk someone off. Giving head is uncomfortable. I'm I'm chubby. Is it's is why it's not comfortable. That makes sense. I mean, yeah, I I think I think jerking off in a car is definitely more enjoyable yeah. than really anything that involves a lot of movement beyond that in a car. I guess it depends yeah. on the car as well. Right. I mean, like if you know, like you have to adjust the steering column, like there's a whole lot going on when a blowjob is involved while the car is in motion. Um it's just an awkward angle. Even if you're in the back seat, um, someone earlier uh, said, you know, that's why they enjoy a truck. And that's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, yeah I'm sorry. Uh, Run the gauntlet. Uh, says, as a big guy, this is why I like trucks built in bed. Exclamation point. For sure. Yeah, I mean. Um, this is why I heavily considered becoming a truck driver. <laughs> I personally, I'm going to one-up that, and I'm going to say Van. Uh, like a, a, not a minivan, but like a, uh, like a, and I'm not going to say like a fucking, you know, kidnapping van, but a van, well, you just did enclosed truck, like, because having that, uh, you can actually, you know, you can put a mattress back there and you can fucking sleep in it. It's fine. Um, so yeah, honestly, I feel like because so using grinder, there's a lot of truck drivers on there uh, mm -hmm. just because, you know, they they're traveling all the time. So they're always in the there's like a fresh faces tab, basically, where you can see the like new users that you don't usually see. Um, so you'll see a lot of truck drivers. And like, I feel like truck driving and being gay is basically just constant road trip and sex. And. I kind of like the idea of that lifestyle. Not going to lie. That's why I liked when I was working the conventions. That's why I miss it. <laughs> That's but, why you're uh, not I mean, you know, I'm fan base, but interacting with your fan base. <laughs> the, you know, there's, there's pros and cons and the cons are pros. Wow. Anyways, rogue biologist says, <laughs> Uh, cruising is casual sex with a stranger, locking eye contact, and then doing something in a public place, and then never seeing each other again. Used to be bigger back when gays were having to hide who they were in fear of public stigma. Okay, so cruising is literally grinder without grinder, just like seeing somebody in a public space and being like, "All right, I'm gonna hook up and never see you again." That's interesting. How That's do you like how do you know? Like I, I guess unless you're in like a gay club. I mean, I guess that makes sense why you said, oh, now that it's more of a, like, accepted, you know, out in the open thing. Um, but, I don't know, I still, I get a lot of anxiety 
still now not knowing whether somebody I'm talking to is going to be upset if I like acknowledge the fact that I'm attracted to them in, in any sense of the, of, of that. Um, so like I try not to openly flirt with somebody in public. And so like, how do I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like the, the idea of trying to make eye contact with a stranger and like casually make your way into like the bathroom or something. I'd, I don't know how I would do that. Yeah, I don't have the wherewithal to like, I've got no short game. So especially not like I've got to, you know, subvert social norms and not die and try to hook up. Like that's, that took, that took some fucking uh, big cojones. Uh, so big, big ups to the gay community for surviving <laughs> and still thriving. Uh, there is an old code. Demi writes in and says there is an old code that people still use with color bandanas, and where they lace the bandanas. That's like the fucking jelly bracelets from when I was a kid. Like, yeah, oh, if you wear this color jelly bracelet. That means you suck a dick. I just try to have at all times some kind of indicator on my body that suggests homosexuality. Sure. <laughs> so, like right now, I'm I'm showing the camera that I have a a little rainbow bracelet. Uh, but I like rainbow things too, though, like on the weekends, like I'm pretty much just rainbowed out because you're also a flaming homosexual. So no. <laughs> yeah. um, also, that's okay. not that's not entirely true. So uh, just because I, I don't want I want to make sure it doesn't go unnoticed uh, earlier. Uh, uh, the Taurus. Emily wrote in, uh, if Roadhead is not the pinnacle of awesomeness, what is? Uh, mm. It is definitely multiple partners going down on me at the same time. <laughs> that, How does that work? You don't have multiple dicks? Um, I do have dick and balls and an asshole, though. Oh, okay. Okay. I understand <laughs> now. I understand. I was yeah. I was thinking closed-minded. I do... I, I do wish that Julie Roberts was attainable because she's got a big mouth and could probably handle all three of those things at once. But <laughs> that's why. Yeah, correct. Like, I think yeah. Julia Roberts is a beautiful, gorgeous. Woman. Dare I say a pretty woman? Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Julia Roberts, gorgeous. And like, I, I, when she, didn't she play Tinkerbell and Hook? Yep. I love that look for her. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I love it. Like, it, it, literally every instance of Peter Pan has really made me question my sexuality because the Tinkerbells looked like men and the Peter Pans looked like women and they were played by all kinds of different different genders and identities. And I was just like, I don't fucking know what I am, but I'm attracted to everyone. All of it. They give me and I, I, it so difficult yeah um moore's hans asks uh you enjoy your ring cleaned yes yes please uh rim job all day rim job beats blow job i mean i need to probably finish with blow job anyway yes a good rim job if you haven't had one get yours today friend please see the aforementioned use of tongue demonstration Rim job all day. Isn't Rim job the name of the dog in the Ernest movies? <laughs> I Rim like. I seriously think it is. You know, like Ernest scared stupid. Uh huh. Doesn't he have a dog named named Rim job? I don't think that would fly. It's an Ernest uh, movie, though. Like they they were pushing some boundaries. Rim shot is probably the name because Rim shot is the thing. Like okay, a, you know that's that's a rim shot. Okay, Jesus so if, Christ! If I, like I don't know. Like I've seen the Ernest movies when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, you know, Jim Varney is a great comedian. Was, but, um, yeah. Thank you, Demi the Drag Queen. It's rim shot. Uh, just just verified it for us. All right, thank you. Yeah, I I like rim job as a yeah. for a dog. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, rim job. Come on. 
I was just giving Rim Job a walk. <laughs> Rim Job had to poop. Oh God! See, that's <laughs> don't ruin the things I love. <laughs> get, get a doggy bag for Rim Job. <laughs> what a mess! Mm. There's a lot. There's a lot here. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people writing in. Uh, Rogue biologist says Tetris is practice for how to fit multiple people into small areas it really is yeah i mean like it takes a lot of communication and a lot of sharing <laughs> sharing is caring friends and then moody taurus taurus i don't know how taurus. to pronounce it taurus, taurus yeah. uh taurus <laughs> taurus, taurus. <laughs> wrote in and said i love writing rimming sadly never experienced it um that actually brings up an interesting question that i would like to ask you um if it's okay with you. Uh, so how do you go about writing an experience that you haven't experienced? Like something that you haven't uh, done yourself? So, and I, I, I of course, they, they will have to answer, but... I'm just curious, I, if there, if is if there research? The question to or, me, I would say, I mean, like, you know, I didn't know... I, I, Pornography taught me lots of things I wanted to try and I thought, I thought, thought lots of things I wanted to experience. Uh, how to describe those experiences, I couldn't say. Uh, but I know I wanted to do them and I know that they probably feel good. And you could probably pull from other experiences of, of pleasure to describe uh, a solid rim job. Um, have you ever had a really good poop? Are you frozen? Who are you asking? Anybody. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you can respond in real time, Stephen. <laughs> you can respond the fastest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I have had many great poops. Yeah, I think I've had more satisfying shits than I've had satisfying sex. I'm so sorry. I've I, I've been shitting my whole life. Think yeah. about it. I've been yeah. shitting my whole life. I've only been having sex for like a portion of it. You know. And like I poop really almost every day. Shits. I poop almost every day. But I don't. I don't fuck every day. But I, okay. But sometimes right. I poop Above multiple these, times. Okay. Let's let's take a, a small cross section of your shits. Okay. Okay. Let's. Uh, how many? Like a Venn shits? diagram. No, like just a, a, a. Here's the the data. We're taking a chunk out of it and just okay. Take a chunk out time. of my shits. Yeah. <laughs> In one week span. On average, you shit once a day. Yes? Uh, yeah, I'd say on average. Okay. And of those shits in that seven days, how many were really fucking good? Um, I'd say at like least you one. Afterwards, and you're like, like, you know, like, maybe even 20, 30 minutes later, you're like, man, that was a good shit. I think at least one every week is really, really? satisfying. Sometimes two, yeah. Yeah, no, but no. also keep in mind, like sometimes it, it's not <clears throat> it's not uncommon. I'm getting emotional. Uh, it's not uncommon for my shits to be almost emergencies, and so like it's it's almost always like I need to shit either immediately or very close to immediately, and then like it's it's just like one big shit. Okay. And, like, I think that is satisfying. To pause it real briefly, because we're losing a lot of fucking people right now. Don't think about it, about the poop aspect. Think about the butthole pleasure, okay? That's what really we're focusing on here. We're not talking about... We are we are using the word shit, but really we're focusing on the, the pleasure that one receives in and around your butthole when pooping. So like, see, also, keep in mind, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of, of anal or, like rectal yeah, but I'm, okay like the amount, but I, I'm, I, saying, I'm just like, saying like a lot of so my my sensations of pleasure are very un it, they're detached from the ass. I, i'm not talking about butt play and 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 anal pleasure when pooping i'm talking about orgasm pleasure like the like you're you're just when when you've when you've come and you've just fucking come everywhere and like you're like uh, after a long intense session and you're just fucking exhausted and you just feel that euphoric uh you, you know you're tired you're sweaty you're fucking uh but hungry you, 
you're hungry. I always get hungry after I come. Things, but you just can't even. You don't even want to move because you just feel so fucking great, and your balls are fucking empty. You feel amazing. That level of joy and and satisfaction after an orgasm, you're saying you've had better shits <laughs> than not. I don't think better, but more. More, uh, okay. more, more those, those two levels, more equivalent shits. Like, I, like the number of of good orgasms, great orgasms. Well, let's let's and, let's think of the let's think of the physical shit. sensations. So, oftentimes after I have like a really big, like satisfying shit, you know, I'm sweaty, I'm hungry, I don't want to move. Not, <laughs> like, after a great shit, I'm not sweaty. Like, <laughs> okay. All right, let's not get too far into the woods here with the poops. But um, I, all right, let's I, let's go back into the into the the comments. First of all, Demi says that's a mood I relate, Stephen. Um, I think that was in relation, uh, or in, in as far as number of, of poops being you know, versus the, the satisfying quality, sex. Quality, yeah, 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 yeah. The quantity of good shits versus the quantity of good orgasms. And then Moody Taurus asked if we can switch to piss instead. So we have a, a request, um, and I then was, uh, Demi gave a shout out saying that Moody Taurus is the piss queen. It's true. For those of you who would like to to learn why, I think it was episode three. Yeah, two or three. Yeah, the first episode with a guest has Correct. the the backstory, the origin story of Moody Taurus. You're a superhero now. <laughs> episode two. Episode two. Confirmed. Yeah. But yeah, so uh yeah, let's we can transition into satisfying pisses. Um, real fast. I am not going to end the broadcast, but this is going to be the first episode right. that we're recording. But um I want to try this a little bit differently because I want to keep going, if that's okay with you, Chris. Thumbs up. Uh, but it has been an hour, so I'm just going to do like the little intro video as like a time stamp for me for editing purposes. Sure. But y'all can just stay in the chat. This will still Everybody, be live. Everybody, please, yes, stay in the chat. So uh, to be continued in literally like 10 seconds. So if I can find the button. And All right. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, so Hello. yeah. Um, earlier shout out. There's just uh, some. Uh, are, are we reintroducing? Are we? Are we starting over? What are we doing? Um. Well, we can just say this is a continuation of the conversation from the previous episode. Uh, it ended with a request from someone in chat that we're going to dive into now, and the request was to discuss some satisfying pisses. Piss, pisses? That's right, right? Pisses? No, I think it's just piss. No, piss. Pissing, pissing? Pisses? I mean, we should ask the queen. Yeah, what's the plural for peace? <laughs> it's not no, peace. It's not Mises. <laughs> <laughs> Urinations? So, uh, I've... I'd say... I've had less... Is I guess it maybe it has to do with holding it in because I've had less satisfying pisses than I've had less uh, than I've had satisfying shits. Really? Uh, like I've had some great pisses, but a lot of them come from after sex. Like mm -hmm. if I if I've had some great sex and then I get up when I eventually get up to go piss, it's like a continuation of that orgasm. It's like oh my goodness, it's, it's more stimulation. In that area. Um, hold it, Chris, and keep drinking that water. Okay, so I'm out of water, sadly. I need I need to fucking make a trip, but uh, Moody Taurus, the, the piss queen, wants me to fucking hold it in and, and keep drinking water. I So I am a man of immediate action. Like, it's impossible to buy me a gift because if I want something, I just go out and get it. Um, and so... 
if I want to piss, I just go piss. If I want to poop, I go poop. I don't like to hold it in. I fart at willy nilly, like in public. I don't care. Like I'm not. I'm, the only time I hold it in is maybe on a date or if I'm positive that I, it, I will draw attention. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, like I just do. Th- I I want to be as comfortable as possible at all times. So holding in a belch, a fart, or anything. Uh, is is an inconvenience to me, and I don't want it, so I don't do it. I feel like uh, so to go back with the number of satisfying urinations, <laughs> um, releases. Uh, I so you mentioned that you think you've had less satisfying pisses, and mm-hmm. mostly because nearly all of your satisfying pisses come from having satisfying sex as well. Yeah, they're they're like it's they they usually piggyback off of the the amazing sex and or amazing coming. See, like I feel like most of my pisses are extremely satisfying, uh, and the ones that aren't are the ones that are absolutely fucking awful because of you know personal reasons. Uh, <laughs> but like. Almost every time that I shower, I piss in the shower, and there is something amazing about having like the hot water on my back and pissing in the shower. I I love it. I like legitimately love it. Yeah, I, I mean, very I, I enjoy peeing in the shower as well. It's 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 convenient, um, but I wouldn't say I derive this great satisfaction from it. Um, I look forward to it. Right, <laughs> like I would much rather piss in the shower than pee in the toilet and then get into the shower. Like if I, if I know I have to, I mean, if I know I'm about to shower, I try to, to wait, but it's only due to convenience. It's like, Oh, this way I'm not going to waste a, a water flow. I'm not going to flush that. I get to just pee in the shower and keep fucking on my routine. Like <laughs> it's out of sheer convenience. I'm a whore for fucking. It is. It is very convenient. Yeah. <laughs> convenience whore. I am a very much a whore for convenience. That sounds so much like convenience store and I love it. Yeah. Uh, I'm a convenience whore, and I will definitely pay for and go out of my way to make my life more convenient for me. <laughs> so Rogue Biologist writes and says, the relief you get from emptying a full bladder that is hurting is great. Yeah. Now, I don't, I don't support holding something until it hurts. However, every time that this happens to me, not only does it feel great when I finally relieve myself, but I always imagine... Uh, you know that scene in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World where he goes piss and there's like the little meter mm-hmm. and it depletes? Mm-hmm. I always think of that and I think of um, it, there's a game called Indigo Prophecy where when you go piss, uh, it relieves stress and there's like a stress meter and if you get too stressed, you commit suicide, which is awful. But um, if if you go piss, it relieves stress and the little meter is like, Noop, and then your character calms down. And I think of that every single time. Those two things. I have like these little meters. Yeah. Um, the stress and- meter is absolutely true. And um, but and that's the thing is that like I do enjoy relieving myself after holding it in for a long time. Like whether I'm drinking and I'm not cognizant of the fact that I have to piss, and then I realize I have to piss and I go piss and it's fucking great. Or if I've had to hold it in because I'm having sex. Um, but on a day-to-day basis, once I realize I have to urinate, I go do that immediately. It's like if once I'm mildly inconvenienced by my bladder, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go take care of this now before it becomes a bigger problem. Whereas, so you've never consciously made the decision to hold your piss. Right, right. Like I'm not like, oh, I'm going to hold this in so I can go enjoy it later. Like I'm just like, no, I need to take care of this and I'm going to go on with my Interesting. day. Interesting. Because See, I... I it's just like an indigo prophecy. It's a stressor. Like it's like a, okay, it's something I have to do now. Whereas if I don't take care of it, I'm going to be constantly distracted and I cannot focus on my task fully because I have to piss. Yeah. Are you? I always hold it in. Chorus, are you fucking having a good time right now? I hope you're fucking <laughs> just to the moon. I and I always I almost always hold it in. Yeah. Unless it becomes unbearable. And not because I'm waiting for like <laughs> it to be a pleasurable piss, but because I, I I would just rather do something else than go piss. Like I'm almost always focused on something else. 
and I don't want to, I, I consider it an inconvenience. Like I don't want to get up and have to go piss. So I wait until it's an emergency. Um, but also like, I definitely prefer, and this is for any kind of bathroom related things. I, I always prefer my home bathroom and mm. unless it's an emergency, I will wait until I'm home. I'm a fucking savage. I'll go anywhere. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like immediately you'll just <laughs> with the exception of when i'm getting to know somebody whether it's you know friendship or relationship or otherwise when i'm in the courting phase of any relationship including friendship i will not use their restroom i'm not trying to destroy their life like that um i'll, I'll piss still in their home but i won't i won't poop um yeah i'll piss I'll... in anyone's home <laughs> but i i will almost exclusively only poop at home yeah, only a lot, a lot of people share that sentiment, and I, I used to be that way, but I, I at some point I just stopped giving a shit. And I started wow shitting everywhere. You, you stopped I giving a shit, and then you gave all the shit, all of it, give it away. So Moody Taurus uh, says it's like edging, bro, edging with your bladder. I don't like edging. Um, I think I like edging other people, but I don't like to be edged. Um, well, because you you'd rather be in control than be out of control. So, correct. Trip Fantasy says, "I am the Edge Lord, especially with urine." <laughs> urine, <laughs> not urine, urine. <laughs> and then Rogue Biologist says, "I can feel that. I am not comfortable doing number twos in any bathroom other than my own." Absolutely, but like I I. I probably would not shit in a public toilet like um like public 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 uh, but like a work toilet or that is used as long as it's used by a few people like if it's used by a lot of strangers I, i'll probably hold it unless it's a fucking emergency yeah someone needs to dom chris moody Torres says you can go fuck yourself you can try all day i it's like who can be a bigger asshole no i will fuck you up um, I will, I will fucking break you down and control you the shit out of you on levels you never knew. Jesus. Sorry. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just getting intense. Yeah. Hold on. I, what, I, yeah. what is it? What is it that you're going to do? What, what am I going to do? Yeah. I, it depends on the person. I don't know. Moody Taurus says that, that, um, they think that you feel threatened. Probably like that's probably on a deeper level. Probably, yeah. It's like why I want to be in control because I don't have control of my life, kind of thing. But uh, but yeah, like I, I it, it absolutely depends. Like you asked what I would do, and it's completely situational. Like I'm not gonna fucking. Um, it depends on how somebody likes to be tortured and or doesn't like to be tortured. You know, it depends on the reaction I get. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Well, Demi says, "Fuck me up, Daddy Chris." No. Uh, we have officially turned Demi on. Yeah. And Trip Fantasy says, what would you do to me? I don't, I gotta get to know you, Trip. Like, it's not, I, it's, a, there's gonna be spanking. There's gonna be, there's gonna be some, there's gonna be, I have a big ass paddle. Uh, as a stranger, yeah, the, okay, if you were, if, if I was hired as a dom, having to walk in, first off, I would definitely want to get back, a backstory on whomever. Uh, but there's probably going to be, I'm probably going to bring some toys of, uh, uh, you know, various whips and, and paddles. Um, and, um, then we'll go from there. Um, you know, it, it's really, it's really personal. Like it's, it's about our bond together. You know, I might, uh, there might be some verbal depends on what you're into. Depends on what you're comfortable with. Um, I wanted that. to give you guys some privacy so that <laughs> y'all could have an intimate moment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Real fucking. Trip <laughs> <laughs> Pan says, fish hook me while you rail me from behind. Jesus um, Christ. <laughs> so you, when you say fish hook, you mean like I grab you by, with my fingers and like by the mouth and just fucking pull on you? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I don't know for sure, but that's what I imagine. 
Jesus. No. Uh, Run the Gauntlet writes in and says there's going to be figging. And that's a that's a word that I've only recently learned, and now I think I know who this is, but I won't I won't reveal that. Um, What's figging? For those who don't know. Yeah, uh, we need an explanation. And uh, know, well, I I I want to know if they if they want it to be shared now or if they I want know to what it means, but I want to know if they know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean, Stephen? Well. Uh, Okay, so there's there's potential that this individual is going to be a future guest on the show, and I want to see if they want to reveal it in the chat or in this want me to reveal it in this episode, or if we should wait until they're a guest on the show. Does that make sense? Wait, hold on. <laughs> Jimmy Wright wrote in. Uh, I clipped it at Trip Fantasy. Um, can can the audience clip things from the, our, our broadcast? Um, I th I think they can, yeah, and I think it happen. posts to the channel. I'm not I'm not infinitely sure. I'm new to this, hey. but hey, oh hold on here, hold on, wait wait wait, let me solo you, let me remove the banners. Enjoy the fuck out of that. Do whatever you're gonna do with that. Fucking take it, run with it. It's yours. I give that to you. Jesus. <laughs> it's like it's it's both arousing and cringy and i love it <laughs> <laughs> that was cringy fuck you that was great well so no it's cringy it's cringy only because i'm imagining me doing that and <laughs> i'm just laughing oh sure yeah i'm like i was looking at myself all the way. i was looking at the little fucking camera hole like i don't ever want to hear that me do that ever but you know it's fine uh, so the people are demanding, Chris. Uh, they want the sex tape. You don't specifically want it's trip fantasy. You had a request. A trip, all right. You and me, I will make one together. If that's if that's what you want, I'll fish hook the fuck out of you. All right. Uh, so rogue biologist said I didn't know what it was, but thanks to Google, I now do. Uh, if anyone, if anyone wants to learn about about figging, actually, so run the gauntlet said you Google. got it. Uh, can you clarify? I I just want absolute clarification, because um, I don't I don't know exactly what what you mean by that. But uh, oh, the sex tape, shit. Um, I yeah, you actually owe someone a sex tape. So, Chris. Okay, I, I talked to my partner about that. I, I immediately, like, as soon as the recording was over, like, I ran downstairs and was like, okay, listen. Um, but you have to forgive me. Uh, I have not done that yet. You're absolutely right. I still owe you that. Uh, and I will make another one. I will make one. Uh, and I will view it, even though I don't. I still don't want it. But for you, <laughs> for, for, for trying it out, I absolutely I haven't. I, I momentarily forgot. There's holidays. I got kids. It's, it's a lot. All right. Um, but I absolutely still owe my the, the listeners another one. Yeah. A quote, unquote. Because I did, I, I did one many, uh, many moons ago. Um, okay, anyways, I'm distracted by the comments. Um, so yeah, I commit to you, Trip Fan, and the rest of the listeners and viewers. Uh, there will be a sex tape, I will watch it, much to my own chagrin. Um, if I can just block me out of it, but uh, yeah, so there's a lot going on in the comments here. Uh, yeah, I'm a little. It's I'm a little confused. So, uh, yeah, run the gauntlet. You need to clarify to Stephen, perhaps in a private chat with them. I don't know if you can DM them uh, or, or text them to let them know who you are to verify and also to give consent if you wish to reveal your topic. I, if I get, if I get a vote, I don't know that I do, I would say if this is the topic you were discussing with me before coming on the show today, I'd say we wait. We give the audience. We we we'll, we'll edge the audience, if you will. Oh, uh, ha, ha. oh, um, how's the bad boy with the red beard? I don't um, know. I don't know what that. <laughs> I am so confused right now. 
I am so beyond confused. You're getting you're getting figging from multiple sources, apparently. Um, I guess you just gave away the secret word. That could be anyone. Um, you re- so here's another, just a big shout out uh, to our podcast. Oh, Calm down. I know who it is now. Okay. Okay. I'm big I'm sh- sorry. The person you were with was going to be a guest. Okay. Big shout out to the podcast listeners. You really should join this, the Twitch stream. We will try to make these more regular uh, so that you can be a part of these comments because there's a lot that you're just going to miss um, by just listening in. Um, but again, we will figure out our new format as we go because um, we can't read it all. Uh, but there we are. So you got your shit together there, Stephen? Yeah, I. so it, they were there when I was told of the the figging. Okay. Um, but figging. yeah. So the the other individual is going to be a guest in a future episode, uh, so that we will we will leave it at that for now. Uh, sorry for the confusion. Sorry for the edging, Chris. Um, good. Sorry to be a tease, and uh, yeah, very sorry I, for I being for confused. The delay, so it's good. Um, if I had demanded that we talk about figuring, I would be very upset. That we <laughs> it's all right. Um, so speaking of figging, even though I have no idea what the fuck it is, <laughs> the holidays are approaching and there's a Christmas carol about, you know, bring us some figgy pudding. Um, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Now bring, mm-hmm. now bring us some figgy pudding. Now bring some radio. It's very demanding to go to somebody's house and start screaming at them, you know, in a sing songy way and demanding food. Yeah. It's it's pretty ballsy. Like I think you can only do that during Halloween with trick or treating, but if you're gonna go around to Christmas and try to fucking get some figgy pudding, yeah, I thought the that Christmas especially was more about giving than receiving. <laughs> that's, what, um, that's what I tell my significant other every Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it is very demanding. I'm just saying. I agree. To segue. Um, what else we got out there? What's what, else, what what's some other topics here? We got we got uh, we got a great audience, some great participation. Demi, now that you're all rock hard. <laughs> Demi's been a little quiet. I think Demi's taking yeah, care of Demi's themselves. A little busy. <laughs> Demi's typing with one hand. <laughs> Demi's cleaning a mess off of the keyboard. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I, I owe the fans a sex tape, uh, never to be released, but to be viewed. I'll give you. I tell you what, we'll, we'll try to set up. <laughs> um, Jesus. So we'll, we'll, maybe we'll, tr- Stephen. We'll try to set up, and I will hate this, but I'm willing to do this for my my fans. Of me viewing the sex tape. You know, so that you can see my reaction, like a reaction video to my own sex tape. Oh, but we can't see the sex no, tape, obviously. No, please. I, I, I don't think that my partner would fucking... Would we be able to hear the sex tape? No, you don't want to hear macaroni noises. <laughs> so no no audio? Just your I, reaction? Yeah, just, just my reaction. And are you thinking maybe this is this will be a, a live-streamed event? Maybe. So, maybe. just to clarify, mm-hmm. you are suggesting... <laughs> <laughs> that we live stream yeah. your face yeah. watching your own sex tape <laughs> with no other audio. <laughs> when you say it like that, it doesn't sound great. I, I think it sounds great. Also, it's only going to be like 30 seconds of content, so... <laughs> Oh. oh, fuck. God. <laughs> Just a stream. <laughs> Can you imagine the title? <laughs> Just watch Chris watch his own sex tape live. <laughs> and it's just like your face like really up close. Like just. <laughs> and then every now and then you're just like, oh. Oh Most God! Be like, oh, don't, oh, don't turn that off. Oh, 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 geez. Oh, well, this part's oh God. Well, of course, I'm going to give a play-by-play. Um, 
<laughs> oh my goodness. So um Moody Taurus wants a stream of just me being inconvenienced. <laughs> oh, that's every stream. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> that's just... <laughs> just, just just exist in my life and you'll hear me lament about fucking existence, okay? <laughs> Oh, not again. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, uh, Rogue Biologist said some of the traditions that we have during the holidays is alien to them. Like people going around to other houses to sing carols. It's not something that's done here. And I'm, it's not something that's done here either. It's something that was romanticized back in like the 50s. It doesn't actually happen because people would call the police <laughs> <laughs> like, you just hear a faint jingle bells at your door and... <laughs> like, jesus get christ gun. get the gun with as many guns as we have in america people are not gonna go a family of seven was killed today yeah um so it does not yeah it doesn't actually happen like you'd have to go to the zoo or to an amusement park to see what would be faux carol carolers just singing in public, singing Christmas carols. Um, yeah, it doesn't really happen. It's I'm definitely sure like a romanticized summer. idea right. of the holidays. I'm sure in some ultra white suburb that that might still happen, but it's very planned and very like, ooh, we're gonna. So everybody, the HOA got together and we're just gonna have a nice little uh, caroling session. If you want to join, no big deal. <laughs> uh, Carol makes a great hot cocoa afterwards. Anyway. <laughs> Um, of course, it's Carol. Carol is the Carol. Yeah, yeah, I, apparently, my dumbass brain decided to <laughs> that was already involved. But um, yeah, it doesn't really happen rugby, so don't worry. You're not missing out on anything. Maybe we should start like a like a leather daddy, uh, caroling troop that carols through the ghetto <laughs> exclusively. Sure. <laughs> But they, we all have to be extremely flamboyant. I think if you're leather daddies, you're already there. <laughs> I don't know. I've seen, I've seen very masculine leather daddies. Flamboyant to me does not mean not masculine. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, flamboyantly homosexual leather daddies. Same. Like, you can be masculine and be flamboyant to me. Flamboyant doesn't mean feminine to me. Okay, I see. I see. Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm in the minority. I don't know. Flamboyant means, I mean, like stereotypically would be, you know, like just, just very loud and proud in your face, and that's great. Um, but you can still be masculine and do that. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. I think I think I'm thinking of flamboyancy. Is that a word? Flamboyancy? I think I think what, what you're describing, I think of as bombastic. And when I think of flamboyancy, I immediately go down, and it, it is a stereotypical route, um, but I immediately, like, just the word flamboyant, I think of flaming homosexual. Bye, Moody Taurus. Thanks for joining. Um... Okay, fair enough. Yeah, and we could, yeah, it's, uh, we could mince words about it, but I know what you mean. And, um, yeah, I think we need to get some some homosexual caroling going. I feel like that's probably a thing. I feel like we're... Homosexual caroling? Yeah. Specifically there are in the ghetto? There's all over Cincinnati. I'm sure they do some caroling, but maybe not. Let's inspire some some gay carols. <laughs> Don we now or gay apparel? Yeah, yeah, we have to. Or Dom me now <laughs> in gay apparel. <laughs> sure. Actually, I really like the idea of rewriting Christmas carols to be just inherently sexual sure 
over at Mount St. Joseph. I don't know if I know where that is. Do you know where that is? Uh, there's a Mount St. Joseph uh, in like coleraine -ish area, the west side. Uh, it's a school for children. Uh, oh. Yeah. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> the buns? Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> I don't <laughs> <laughs> nuns, the nuns will love it. The nuns. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I... Yeah, N and B are real close together. Yeah, nuns. There it is. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I think they would. Surely okay. there are Rule Thirty Four Christmas carols somewhere. I kind of want to. I want to see if I can find some sexy Christmas carols. I mean, I'm sure you can rule 34 the Grinch and like the Who, like the Who Billions and Santa Claus. I'm sure has been naughty, but um, yeah, uh, friends of mine are they're doing a sketch, a holiday sketch show. And um, I heard them rehearsing a, um, like a very naughty, like they want Santa to have sex with them song, talking about his Yule log and all kinds of good stuff. Mm. Yeah. Um, so it exists for sure. Yule log. Mm hmm. It's Christmas hog. You don't like the Santa imagery? I don't. I don't think I like the Santa imagery. Oh, speaking of Santa imagery, though, have you seen? Have you seen the? I think it was Norway. It was either Norway or the Netherlands released a, a video. It's basically like a little short film, uh, where uh, there's a man who falls in love with Santa, and he can only see him once a year. But like it, it, it's it's actually a beautifully shot, a beautifully done show. But it was funded by the government there in celebration of 50 years of legal gay marriage. Oh, and like this, this video is, is I think it's beautiful. Uh, I watched it at work and I was getting all emotional and I had to explain to somebody that I was crying because Santa's gay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> See, that's what you should do, Steven. That's, that's right, right there. It's <laughs> a little fucking cross section of how you make things. fucking. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was actually really beautiful. And then like it all culminates into, you know, he he writes a letter to Santa and says, All I want for Christmas is you. Aww. And then like there's a there's a scene where they're like making out. And stuff. Pops up and... <laughs> <laughs> um so that's heartwarming, but also tragically sad that you can only see the love of your life once a year. Um, there's also a Black Mirror episode that's sort of similar. Um, if you Is it the video it. game one? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I like that one a brain lot. Went when you were talking about how you can only see him once a year. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I really like that episode. That's a good one. That's a good one. I feel like I can relate to it. <laughs> yeah, on many levels, probably. <laughs> Uh, Rogue Biologist says, is that the gay Santa advert that's going around? Yes. Yes, it is. I think it's like three minutes and some change. Uh, but, but yeah, it's kind of like a public service announcement. Like, not really an announcement. It's like a, it's to honor 50 years of legal gay marriage in, I want to say it's Norway. But I could be wrong. But can you, how long has, has gay marriage been legal here in the U.S.? Because it's been like, I don't even think it's been 20 years. No. I don't even know if it's been 15. I barely, if so. Like, maybe 10. I'm not even sure. I should just know this. Hold on. Yeah, How me? long? Where are you at? 
Has gay marriage been legal? You might in fact go to. In... 2004. Oh, shit. So how long ago? A long time. That's 15 years. 16. Right? Really? 2004. It's 2021. Oh. It was expanded think... to all 50 states in 2015. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So 2015. 2015. Yeah. Thank you, Rogue Biologist. Um, but yeah, so 2015. So that's six years. Six years. Yeah. And Norway, it's been legal for 50 years. Yeah, America sucks, bro. It just that blows my mind. Yeah. Longer than I've been alive. Like I it's it's difficult to fathom, especially like there's so much progress that needs to still happen. And the fact that I don't know, it, it just I have a lot of feelings <laughs> about yeah. this. Sure. It's frustrating, I guess. Australia gay marriage has been legal since twenty seventeen. Damn. I like out of context that it's just Australia has been legal since 2017. <laughs> Before 2017, yeah. Australia. Australia legal prior to 2017. <laughs> it's, it's, the, the entirety of Australia. It's very, very illegal. It's probably because of the aliens laying eggs in people. God, probably. <laughs> we never really get, went anywhere with that, but that's terrifying. <laughs> Ours was a bullshit situation. They made it a national vote so people could choose to mail in their vote. I don't know how to unpack that one. Yeah. It, what made it a bullshit situation? It depends on how you feel about mail-in voting, really. Like, there's some controversy around mail-in voting. Oh, was it exclusively mail-in vote? Is that what the issue was? I feel like if the only option was to mail in your vote, generally, I feel like fewer people would. In a, in a progressive stance, it's you want to give people as much accessibility to to, to voting as possible. Whether you know, like, because if the, the more narrow it is, like whether it's in person, like you've got to travel, you have to have mm -hmm. the means to do so, and yada yada. I, I don't know where we're going with that, but um, but yeah, generally, I'm a fan of voting however you fucking can. I want. I, I don't understand why we can't vote on our fucking phones at this point. But yeah, I can. I can log into my bank account and transfer thousands of dollars, but I can't vote for issues like. Yeah, I can pay my taxes electronically. Why can't I vote? Yeah, but you know whatever. And still, mail is. I think any way you can vote, fuck vote, but make your voice heard. But yeah, I think it's good for there to be options, though. Options. What we got? Come on, come on, folks. We, we I, I'm, I, we've become lazy now that we have an audience participation. So, um, rugby follows up with instead of just voting on it in Parliament and passing it, they opened up to the whole country. It resulted in all the home folk people coming out with their slur campaigns to try to persuade people against it. That is why. Mm. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. That, thank you for the clarification. I was really worried for a second. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, right. Instead of just doing the right thing from jump, uh, you leave it to the people so that, you know, like, it, yeah, that's, that's a tough one. That's tough. And uh, unfortunately, the people are not always the most reliable. <laughs> yeah. By and large, people suck. A person can be great. A person can also suck. People. Apparently, some of our audience sucks very well. They've been, yeah, been voted on. <laughs> so I, I have an idea, and I want to present this publicly. Um, of of course, Chris, I I think your vote is going to have a little bit more weight, but uh, depending on what our what our audience says as well. Um, so. For future episode recordings, how do you feel about um, 
like the first hour is sort of a traditional episode with uh, still some audience participation, but maybe not as much. Um, and then maybe the second hour could be like a live stream exclusive. And then that way we have the podcast version, but then we have the the version where it's basically a conversation with the audience where there's more chat interaction. Cause I've noticed uh, when we record, we usually, the first hour is more like a traditional episode anyways. And then we kind of relax and chill out. And it's almost like we're just hanging out with our fans um, and hanging out with the audience. But I feel like a lot of it is um, if you're exclusively an audio listener, I feel like it would be harder to follow because they don't have the chat there because they're not part of that conversation, if that makes sense. It does. I feel I mean, just in my initial reaction to that is that we need more data points. I think two, two outings of this is not enough to go on. Uh, and unfortunately, I think it's a matter of just, I think it's a matter of the hour that we're getting to. Uh, mm -hmm. Rogue B writes, uh, sounds good, but how many live stream sex tapes are you planning on getting into getting to watch? Right. Yeah, just just the one. Um, at least for my own. Like I'll watch I'll watch porn all day long and give you my reactions to it. Um, you know, I, I in fact think we that could be a whole of the show. It's just us watching porn and then giving you our fucking feedback. I wish we could show it, but unfortunately I don't think that won't fly against the terms. <laughs> terms. I feel like sometimes we might even be pushing it, but probably, probably. Um, any hoozles. Um, I think it's there's the factor that we are running into is the the late hour with, with which we are recording. Mm -hmm. um, you know the, that we start out with a lot of gusto and there's a lot of interaction with the audience. Uh, and we could uh, we could we could keep doing that and or we could just curb it and just you and me you and i talk and you know pull from the audience when we need to or want to but um as the hour gets later people have to go to work the next day and or you and i get also get tired and like so i'm just like come on audience give me something to talk about <laughs> or, you know we just got lazy with them rather than try to organically come up with something on our own um it did definitely merits discussion. I think that even our podcast listeners should also have a vote in that as well. Uh, let us know what you want, what we can do for you to make your experience better. Um, no matter how you enjoy our show, or if you if you enjoy it, <laughs> assuming a lot, maybe you just listen because you fucking hate me. God, that motherfucker! I I hate him. I don't want to... Watch him. <laughs> like, like that's that's a thing. Like. Like a lot of a lot of people I know will like you know join conservative chats so they have more vitriol and hate and like so they can so because they're fighting the good fight or whatever you know and they're trying to voice the the their their liberal uh, you know opinions uh, and try to influence people and, and show them like they but really you're just there to have more rage <laughs> like you know or, or the people who like listen to like shock jocks like, like when Howard Stern was extra controversial people would listen to him even though they didn't like what he had to say because they just couldn't turn away kind of thing mm -hmm. or, or like Rush Limbaugh like you know you fucking hate him but you listen to see what he's talking about don't you fucking hold in that yawn you mother <laughs> I tried. I tried. <laughs> I just know that it's contagious, and I don't want to, like, if I yawn, then our entire audience yawns. Debating someone is a good way to help challenge their beliefs. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, Rogue. But I feel like I don't know how... What's what's your win percentage? You know, like at the end of the day, uh, how many victories can you claim? Um, yeah, I think I think oftentimes 
Uh, especially online, I feel like debates reaffirm beliefs more so than like change beliefs. You know? Demi, we love you. Thank you so much for helping navigate tonight. Uh, I'll, I'll make a special Dom video just for you. Oh, geez. You're making a lot of promises for these videos and sex tapes. I I love our listeners and our viewers and people who are contributing. I want I want them to feel <laughs> I want them to feel that they are loved and they are. Um and Rogue Biologist writes in, uh, it actually makes me say that healthy debate isn't something that happens uh, these days. People attack each other personally rather than challenge those beliefs. Um I, I agree. Like it's, we've become so divided and we take it personally um, that it, it's, it, it, we, we can no longer even discuss our ideas without it becoming too heated and, 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 and um, too, I don't know. We, we, take, we take it personally. Like, it's like, uh, how dare you? Like we also confuse opinions with facts. <laughs> um and I, I do it for a joke and you know, for a laugh, but I, it's not, you know, I, what I say is it's just my opinion. It's not real. Like, it's not, you know, um, let's see here. Oh, there's some rogue says that Demi needs to shower because they finished with those clips. I'm really, I'm curious as to what they clipped. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm curious too. As uh, to and then what was... Demi said, don't call me out, rogue. Yeah. Um, really, I didn't know that that uh, our viewers could could clip. But that's great. More, I knew it was a thing, but I thought like I had to allow it, yeah, and I didn't know I, how. My DMs. I, I will add you. As a, send me a friend request, Demi. Um, I'm, I'm sure I've seen you about. So, I will add you and you let me know. Oh, I got, I got, I got the clip. All right. I have I the clip. clip. <laughs> I got the clip. Um, I'll send it to you now, Chris. Don't ruin this thing with the Demi that I have. Anyway. I may have sent it to the wrong Chris. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I may have sent it. To my old English don't, instructor in college. Don't stream and tweet. Text. It'll be fine. It'll be <laughs> fine. We got a new listener. <laughs> <laughs> That's my last name. Philippi. F-I-L-I-P-P-I. He puts the PP in Philippi. All right. Thanks for great insults. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's fine. I just haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> but you have heard it. Yep. <laughs> Damn. PP. Yeah, it's, I've got a PP in my last name. <laughs> Don't you think that all the fucking PP jokes have been heard? Because they have. Emily's missing out now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, to our podcast listeners, I'm so sorry. I think I don't even know that we might air this one as a podcast, just because there's a lot of, you know, we might. I don't know. There's, yeah, there's I think I'll talk with this one. This might be a Patreon exclusive. I don't know. I think what I'm gonna do, uh, if it's okay with you, I I might just edit the the first chunk of the second part into the end of the audio thing, sure. and just have that be one whole thing. That's fine. Um, I trust your skills and abilities. No, <laughs> I I now don't trust. My I know. I, I, now I, my I'm reassured by <laughs> your groovalicious dance. Groovalicious, damn. Yeah. Man. Okay. Well, I think that's. I think we should call it. I think it's been a good night. I think I feel I think pretty sleepy. Night. Before I make any more commitments to people <laughs> yeah apparently like you're giving out a sex tape every episode i'm not giving out a sex tape i'm just, i have to record one and then at some point we will view it i will view it and you'll watch me view it 
We'll see. Um, so the video uh, for Demi, though, mm -hmm. um, featuring you, mm -hmm. uh, could I maybe direct? That no, what uh, I, I know exactly what it was when I got mad. <laughs> That's what what Demi liked when I exerted my control. <laughs> um, you can try to direct that, but it it you can't. It's a uh, the anger. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what, correct. It's it's and oh by the way, uh, don't try to be a brat to me. That doesn't. It it's not where you want to be. Like there's brats out there who is that a challenge? To, who try to provoke me and it doesn't work. It's not. It's counterintuitive. I don't have a good time. Oh, okay. So you don't. You legitimately do not like brats. Yeah, I get actual ang I get actual mad. <laughs> oh, okay. Not playful mad. <laughs> and it, that's yeah. It takes all kinds, Demi. It takes all kinds. Um, and you know what I you know what I lament, and I think we should get into this into another episode is, so people, and maybe this is out there. I don't know about it, but. People will pay women to be dominatrix dominatrixes, but there's not a large market for paying men to be doms. It does it's exist. Not, it does exist. It does exist. I think um, I, I I might be able to help you market yourself if this is a route that you want to take. <laughs> <laughs> I um. Yeah, I'll, here's what I'm gonna do. I feel like you want to take this offline. Uh, well, I mean, there there's some things, yeah. But I'm gonna I'm actually gonna make a little note in the studio, the digital studio, for next time, so that I remember that this is a topic. How to market yourself as a uh, male dominatrix. Thank you. Male dominatrix. Is dominatrix a gendered? I think it is. That's why I was like. A male dom. Dominator. Um, well, there, there's a few different categories and maybe we can get into it sure. um, in a future episode. But uh, there are a few different categories. But I think um, I think where you would find some success is in like the. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Uh, I think you. I think you could find some success in the like cash master oh, realm. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah. And yeah, there's there's actually um. Well, I'll I'll Are you I'll tell you later. To be a true dom is what are you what are you saying here? What? No, I I just I think if your goal is to be paid to do these things, I think you could make a lot more money. Not even paid as it were, yes, paid. But th there's that. But, like, I don't see... There's not the trope of the, you know, let me give my money to somebody who's going to spank the shit out of me. And, or, I don't know. As a dude, like, there's, there's people who pay women to do that, but... Are there people who pay men to do that? And will you pay me? <laughs> Me specifically, or or Demi? Anybody? <laughs> Anybody listening? Please, for the love of Jesus, we should make banners with our Venmos. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if you saw this, but um, in some of the old episodes of the show that I have been slowly putting as videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. In the little ticking banner, like the ticker on the bottom of the screen, occasionally I put like a little, a fun little thing that tells people to to send money to my Venmo. Um, <laughs> what about the donate to MTF Productions? Where's my cut? Well, there's there's that as well, but but I tell them if they donate money to my Venmo with like the specific wording. Of like this is for a dinner date with Chris, <laughs> then you know we we have like a dinner date slash business meeting. 
right. But really, I just want pasta. Really, <laughs> feed us, please. <laughs> we just we want food. <laughs> we... I just want some wings. There's also like I sprinkled some random fun facts as well. Good. In some of the old videos, there's like little sexy fun facts, but. It, that gives all of our listeners and viewers a reason to go back and watch the YouTubes, you know? Yep. Some of your some of your favorite hits, go back and check them out to get some, some sexy fun time clips. <laughs> and please, for the love of God, donate money. Please. Please. <laughs> we cannot stress enough how much we need money. <laughs> <laughs> Or should I get all fucking dumb about it? All your money. I and and I appreciate it when you give him and me all of your money. You're Thank you. All, money. all right. I get it. Thank you, Demi. All right. I think it is time to go to bed. All right. I'm ready to sleep. Everybody who contributed tonight, thank you so much for tuning in and for talking to us. Uh, thanks for taking time out of the days. <laughs> So much. <laughs> it is truly appreciated, and I will make sex tapes for all of you. <laughs> Jesus, there's a lot of sex tapes. We've we've got to do a lot, it's or lot. you've got to do a lot. I don't know. I, uh, yeah, no, you're involved in this now. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and end the thing. Thank you, everyone. Love, love, love. Love you.